I'm going to be talking about 7-inch props, 7-inch motors, all sorts of motor sizes, all the things that I've tested lately, also over the years, and pretty much the consensus of 7-inch as I've known it today. But before that, I'm going to talk about this motor real quick because I'm genuinely impressed with this motor. So this is a Racer Star motor. Yeah, it's a Razor Star motor, and I've tried a couple of Razor Star motors over the years, and they've actually been really awful. Of all the things Razor Star makes, I think their motors are probably the worst thing they make. They do make some really good things, like the Anniversary Edition ESC, which is a 6S ESC that performs really great, and I still use them to this day, and they're just solid performers, and it's like a $25 ESC. So there are some Razor Star things that are genuinely good. However, their motors are not something I would recommend. Recently, they have been doing this thing where they make a motor with T-Motor. And this is the second one of the motors that they've made. The previous one was a 2306, I think. It's the T-Motor F40. It's the old F40 by T-Motor. And I don't know why on earth T-Motor is reducing themselves down to making Racer Star or working with Racer Star on things. But whatever it is, this motor is one of those made by... <laughs> Racer Star, but designed by T Motor Motors. And I didn't try the previous one, but I picked this one up just because I've been playing around with 7 inch and it's a 2508 motor. And I'm shocked to say that this motor is like 95% T Motor and maybe 5% Racer Star. So I'll quickly go over the specs, of, or not specs, but just show you the motor. So it's, it's like 46, no, it's 49 grams. I weighed it with the long wires. It's 49 grams. So this is a hefty motor, 2508, and just I mean, just look how thick those magnets are. On the right, you see this is an HGLRC motor, the 2408, and it has thin magnets, but holy moly, look how thick those magnets are on the T-Motor. So running through the rest of it, it has a lip underneath the magnet ring, which holds the magnets in in case they do decide they want to slip. The air gap is super tight. As you can see, it's got multi-stranded windings. It has a hollow shaft with a two point, M2.5 screw underneath, and... Uh, Here's the inside of it. This is what the stator looks like. It's got 0.2 millimeter laminations and nine millimeter bearings. I mean, I don't know. I can't, I don't really know what else you could put in a motor to make it better than what this motor already has, other than the things that I cannot verify, which is the titanium shaft. I can't verify that it's a titanium shaft. And I also can't verify that it's 7075 aluminum. I'm assuming it's not. I'm assuming it's a steel shaft and 6063 or something because they got to cut corners somewhere. It's a $20 motor and it's massive. And that's a lot of magnet in this motor. And the performance is freaking awesome too. So, so I'm going to move on. But if you're looking for a seven inch motor and you're looking for something that's got good value, I'm really pleased to say that this motor is a shockingly good value for the performance that I'm getting. So now you're watching this quad fly. I'm going to watch this quad fly in a second. This is my um, Hyperlight uh, Glide Floss frame. And this is the seven inch version. I've had this build for a long time now and I just keep swapping motors around on it and just slowly testing 7 inch. I am no expert at 7 inch by a long shot. It's a long shot. I have not tested a lot of 7 inch stuff at all. However, I have tested maybe 6 or 7 motors over the years and a bunch of props over the years. So I'm just going to kind of put together what I know because I have been doing a lot of 7-inch testing lately. So you're watching this thing fly right now. What you're watching fly right now is the quad, which is 934-ish, or somewhere between 930 and 940 grams all of weight. That's with two 1050 milliamp 6S batteries. So that's 2100 milliamps of 6S battery and the frame and 49 gram motors. So that's just 200 grams of motor alone and seven inch props of which each prop is 10 grams a piece. So that's 200 grams of motor, 50 grams, 40 grams of prop. And then you have the frame, which is like 120 grams. And then you got the batteries, which are like 180 grams. Of, like this is not the heaviest quad for seven inch, but it's definitely not light as well. And you're watching how nicely it moves. So I'm gonna go over the benefits of seven inch or just the differences, the reasons why you might want to try seven inch or why I'm interested in seven inch. So I'll go over all the size classes that are popular at the moment. So 2.5 inch is, aside from whoop class, 2.5 inch is the first size up that is really, really, really popular because as you go from a 2 inch prop to a 2.5 inch prop, the general area of the prop size starts expanding exponentially or just a lot faster, not necessarily exponentially, just a lot faster. So you get a lot more disc area to load with the all-up weight of your quad. Then you get 3 inch, which is a well-known size that everybody loves because it's still small but it's 
it's very powerful and it can have a nice disc loading area as well so you got some weight to work with and you can make it perform really nicely then you kind of have nothing up to 5 inch we don't really do 3.5 or 4 inch because they're not quite small anymore and they're not quite versatile enough to really carry a GoPro or something really nicely so they're kind of like bastard sizes in the middle but then you get to 5 inch and it's like the most versatile size you can do anything with 5 inch and it's awesome and it performs amazing it's super snappy super agile it's great great size quad but then you start moving above 5 inch 5.1 still feels a lot like 5 inch maybe a tiny bit duller but still very very much 5 inch then you keep going and then the next step up is going to be 5.5 inch now 5.5 and 6 inch 5.5 feels like 6 inch to me it doesn't really feel like it's any more snappy than a 6 inch prop and i partic my favorite 5.5 inch prop is the gem fan 5551 i believe that's the name of it and that's just happens to be a prop that performs really nicely and if i was to fly a six inch quad i would probably run that 5.5 inch prop on it because it's just such a good prop the six inch props they don't do it for me they're kind of dull they don't really give you any more flight time i'm going to go over that in a minute but you don't really get more flight time by going up in prop size which is sort of one reason why you might want to try a larger size and to me six inch is kind of like that bastard size 5.5 and 6 inch they're really not sizes that I really care to use because I'm not getting more flight time I'm losing a whole bunch of response I get a little bit more overall cruising speed but I also have a higher risk of breaking the quad and I just don't really get a whole lot for all that risk and everything that I'm putting into the quad plus I need bigger batteries and all this jazz whatever but then you get to 7 inch and when you get to 7 inch things change a little bit more the quad becomes a lot more finicky to tune and get right and actually get it to perform properly but you get a lot of cruising speed for all that effort and it does cruise so nicely you're seeing this quad i'm cruising for four and a half minutes at a really high pace much higher than i could with a five inch probably similar to a six inch but you just have more ability to go faster more consistently and this is a 2100 milliamp 6s battery and I still feel like I want a little bit more battery on board to really help manage the amps. But I'm gonna let this video play out. It's like four and a half minutes of straight flying. I'm just showing you the flight time on this quad, it's general performance, and what I was able to achieve. Now this is the best performance I was able to achieve so far on a seven inch quad. Now this is running the Radix Lee, the 20 by 20 Radix board, but that really doesn't matter. It really has nothing to do with the flight controller, it does nothing to do with anything else. The ESC is the, um, Success from iFlight, the, the big one, the 6S, or I think it's even 8S ESC, uh, 8S, 16, whatever. It's the biggest ESC that they have, which again is not really necessary, although this one is nice because it has the metal fets and it has good cooling. And it has the HQ 7x4x3 props, which is a pretty heavy, close to 10 gram prop layout. But I'm going to talk about the HGLRC 2408. So this is the 2408 from HGLRC, and this is a particular style of motor manufacturing, which we've seen in the past. Um, Emacs has done it with their uh, light series 2306 motor, which has been a shockingly light, it's like 27.5 or 28 gram motor, which is amazing for a 2306. They basically just use thinner magnets. And there are some engineers that have told me that the thinner magnets don't matter. <laughs> You're going to get the same performance whether you have thick or thin magnets up to a certain extent. However, uh, Ryan Harrell of Mini Quad Test Bench, which I have much more trust in, has told me that you kind of get the maximum benefit out of the magnets that are like 1.7 or 1.8 millimeters thick. I haven't really talked to them in a while. But the magnets on this 2508, I mean, just look at the size of the bell ring compared to the 2408 next to it. Those are some thick magnets. All those look like, like some 22.2 millimeter thick magnets or something. So there's, a, there's kind of a... There's something to be said about this because a lot of engineers, two in particular, have told me that the thick magnets don't really make a difference. You might as well just go with thin magnets to get better bell response and you know all that stuff. However, Ryan says that the thicker magnets do actually help tremendously with torque. Now, on five inch quads, this is a little bit elusive because I have tried thick magnets, thin magnets, heavy props, light props, four inch, five inch, six inch. I've tried all these sizes trying to figure out if I can feel a difference of the thin or thick magnets. I sort of somewhat kind of feel like I can. However, motors are much more complicated than that. It's not just the magnets, kind of the whole construction of the motor and the way it's made and designed all together that really gives it the performance that you're, you're going after. So I'm just going to skip 
the rest of this conversation because I could literally talk about that for hours and move on to the performance I was getting on this 2408. Now, this is a 2408 motor. It does feel like it's pretty well built. I don't know what the actual performance is compared to other motors, uh, but I would say that it performs pretty nicely. However, I have flown a lot of small and big motors on 7-inch, and I've never really been satisfied with the performance until I tried this 2508, which is why I really am surprised by the 2508. But I'm going to explain the performance that I was getting on this motor, which is similar to the experience I've had with some other motors, including a, the Sunny Sky X2212, which is a pretty hefty motor, 12 millimeters tall, 2212. Also, I, have, uh, I've, I haven't tried the F80, which I believe is a 2408. I have tried a 2407, the DYS 2407. I've also tried the um, FPV AF 2507, and all of them have given me similar experiences on 7-inch, which is that it kind of feels loose. The quad doesn't feel tight in the air, doesn't feel locked in the air. It just doesn't feel like I can give it stick inputs and be confident that it's going to execute it and stop and zip to a halt the way I want it to. And it just isn't fun to fly when you don't have that really excellent control performance. It just, just doesn't do it for me, and I just don't want to fly it. That's why I don't have any of those quads with those motors on them. And this one was no different. However, with this one, I really made an effort to try and tune it, try to get it to fly right. And I did have the Radix Lee, or no, previously I had the um, Helio board in there, the Helio 20 by 20 board, and it performed better than the Radix Lee and better than all the other flight controllers that I had, that had used. It's just interesting that the Helio board did perform quite well, and people say that they had no IP and everything was a sham and whatever. I, I don't know what was what, but something in that board was performing shockingly well. It gave me no dipping. I had great control with the rolls. It was just a problem with the bobbles. Like when you are in high wind or just windy situations in general, the quad just bobbles around. And uh, I'm going to show you what bobbles look like right now. And I'll tell you what these bobbles are later. I'm just going to show you what I mean by the bobbles. So this is a high wind situation, and there's a whole lot of bobble going on in this. And it's to the point where there's no jello. It's just bobbles, and it's just craziness, and it's hard to fly because you can't really tell what's happening with the quad because it's going on so crazily. Anyways, okay, let's move on to the props that I tried on this motor. So this is a 2408. It's it's suitable motor to attempt to fly on a 7-inch prop. And I'm going to get to motor sizes and the prop recommendations that I make for the motor sizes based on what I know so far. So the first motor, that the first prop that I was flying on this is the HQ 7 by 3.5 by three and I actually think this is a pretty nice prop however it is pretty flexible and I think that is contributing to the bobbling of the quad and what I found on this prop I'm gonna show you now what the quad actually flew like with this motor and this prop without me actually trying to fly smoothly if I just flew it like I flew my five inch this is what it looks like I'm getting wobbles, bounce back, just garbage on every single axis, even the yaw axis. When I come out of a roll and try to halt it in the middle of the roll, I get this weird twist and a wobble diagonally on the quad. I mean, I don't even know where to begin to tune this thing. Many people told me filters and whatnot, and I tried all of this stuff. I tried tuning it with the Radix uh, OSD filter system and trying to get all this stuff out and PIDs and weird modes all over the place and I went into the CLI to try and change like some other weird numbers and tried the 7 inch function of um, what the beta flight people recommend nothing, nothing helped if I turn up anti-gravity to get rid of the dipping on the throttle pump it even made it worse, like it just would go nuts it just nothing worked, so then I started trying different props I moved up to the 7 by 4 by 3 now, this prop is two grams heavier than the seven by 3.5 by three. And I didn't even think about that. I just threw it on the quad and I'm like, oh, yeah, let's see how it is. People say this prop is good. People were telling me that the seven by 3.5 by three is such a garbage prop. Now, this prop is almost 10 grams. And I put it on this motor and the performance was just awful. It was just so much worse. And that's the bobbling that you see in that video that I showed you earlier where it is bobbling off the charts. It's crazy bobbles. <laughs> and I think I have theorized that a lot of that has to do with the motor not being able to manage the heft and aggression of the prop, which again, I will get to that a little bit later as I move down the prop line. So then after I realized that this wasn't gonna work out, I put these props on. This is the Lumineer uh, 6.7 inch folding prop. 
And this is a particularly special prop because it usually, it weighs less than a lot of six inch props. So this weighs like six and a half grams, which is shockingly good for a prop that is almost seven inches in size. Now it is kind of flexible, but it is also made of a glass nylon material that tends to perform a lot better in flight than a polycarbonate material for some reason, whatever, I don't know why that is, but it's also a very shallow pitch. So it's a very low aggression prop to fly, which means that it should be relatively easy to spin for the motor. Now, when I put this prop on, I didn't record the video, but the quad performed significantly better. <clears throat> However, the issue with this prop is that it starts to deflect and not give you control at higher RPMs pretty soon on the throttle range. So it's a little bit of an issue. It doesn't really give you the full performance that you want. So it's okay prop. It gives you good control, really, really tight, snappy like um, response, but it's not really the prop that you want to run. So then I'm like, okay, fine. Uh, clearly something about the aggress aggression of the prop and the weight of the prop has something to do with the performance of it on the motor. So then I went down and tried the lightest prop that Purifab had, which is the Gemfan, what is it? Seven by four two. It's a twin blade, seven by four two. This is a 5.5 gram blade and the blade is moderately stiff. So I expected this blade to have really good control, not control, really good ability to for the quad to maintain its attitude in the air, which is what I am after. Now I'm going to show you this. You're seeing this prop fly now, and you'll notice that this is default settings. I've gone back to default. I've shown you everything I've shown you is on default settings. I haven't shown you my weird PID tunes or any of this other random stuff. Even the, the video at the very beginning, default. Even the rates, everything was default on the quad. I have done nothing to the quad. You see that this, this prop flies significantly better than all the other props. I mean, I don't get any wobbles. I don't get any bounce back. I don't get any yaw twist. I don't get any of that stuff. However, it's a twin blade. And the problem with twin blades is that you don't get the really tight control that you want. You get a little bit of a loose feeling. I, w I think maybe, not think, prop developers and engineers have told me that's because a twin blade needs to change RPM fast or more in order to generate the same amount of thrust and the way you get the control feel or the tight locked feel is to be able to start generating thrust when you change RPMs sooner and that's why quad blades tend to feel much more locked in. Whatever it is, twin blades feel loose. They always feel looser than tri blades. There's a little bit of mix up there because a six inch twin blade actually feels more in control and locked to me than a five inch tri blade with respect to grip. I'm not even gonna get into that. Twin blades aren't ideal. We don't want twin blades. We wanna run tri blades. So then I'm like, okay, that's when I decided to order the Racer Star motors. And then I got them a couple weeks later, put them on the quad. I started out with the HQ 7x4x3 and I haven't even tried the other props because the quad performs awesome on the HQ 7x4x3. Now, first I'll tell you what the actual dimensions of the stator size of this motor is. It's not actually 2508 as it says, it's actually 24.8. I measured it, 20, actually it's 24.75 by 8.3. And that's the measure, I, I used two calipers to measure the stator, and that's the stator size that I got. Now that's not actually a whole lot bigger than a 2408, so why is it making a whole mess of difference? I, I would guess that a lot of it has to do with the magnets and the design, and the overall design of the motor, engineering of the motor. And so I'll get to control, or motor feel and design feel and whatnot in a second, but what I have found is that four seven inch, I would say that 2408 is the bare minimum that could give you really good control performance. Now, there are many people out there that will show you a 2206 that's flying a seven inch quad and it's performing awesome and it's great. That might be the case. They might happen to have a quad that's really well balanced in all axes and it does happen to respond well, perform well, all that stuff well. However, you're, you're, not, you're definitely not getting the same kind of control input and snappy snappy response that you would get from a five inch. And what I have here is a quad that performs very closely to a five inch. However, all the axes just feel a little bit more smoothed out because it is just so much heftier than a five inch quad. And it has so much more prop area and has so much more stuff to manage. But the goal is always to get something that's big and has really high cruising speed that still has the 
control performance that we want, and that's what I've essentially been after. So I have tried 2208s on 7-inch. I've tried 2306s on 7-inch. They don't perform well. They feel like the motor just doesn't have torque to spin the prop. It feels a lot like a really small motor on a really big prop on something like an 0703 on a 65 millimeter prop, which is what I was trying on the toothpick a long time ago. And it just doesn't, it just doesn't do it for me. It just doesn't feel like the throttle does anything. Moving up to the, tw the 2408 really actually felt like I could actually push the throttle and it did something throughout the entire throttle range. Then moving up to this 2508, which I don't think is a whole lot bigger. It's just much better engineered and has much better parts in it. I was getting a whole lot more performance and it was able to manage seven point, the seven inch prop that weighs a lot, the prop that I actually want to run because it's got a nice pitch on it. It's got nice stiffness to it and it has much less bobbling, which again, I haven't tested fully. This is really just an initial discussion of seven inch, but it's uh, performing so far as you can see a whole lot better than um, anything else that I've tried so far. So I would say at this point, the smallest motor I would recommend for seven inches, 2408. And I would rec and I actually would say that this 2508 is really the minimum level of performance that I personally care to fly on seven inch. And I bet that if I put the 7.5 by 3.5 by uh, three on there, it actually would give me even better performance. However, this prop does have more bobble on it. It has always had more bobble on it than this this other prop because. I think it's a little bit more flex. It's a, not a little bit. It's a lot more flexible than the seven by four by three. However, I will be testing that moving forward. Stand by. I mean, I'm I'm always just testing these things. I have tried other 2507s, 2407s, and have had similarly questionable experiences. I want a 2607 or 2608, maybe for a seven inch. I think that's the right size to go with for seven inch. Now the KV is a little bit screwy here because this says it's 1200 KV, but it feels more like 1300 or maybe 1325 or something KV because on 6S you can see it's got a whole lot of speed. <laughs> this thing is not slow on 6S, even though it's just 1200 KV. The 2212 motors that I was using, the Sunny Sky 2212s, those are 1400 KV and I was using those on seven inch and 6S as well. And those were fine. So I thought like 14, 13, 50 is actually a good number for 6S and 7 inch, but these are 1200. I don't actually know what the KV is. So now let's get to um, flight time real quick. Let's talk about flight time. You don't actually get more flight time when you go up in prop size. You need a whole lot more energy and you are moving a whole lot faster. And that's the key. These are performance quads. They're not things that are just hovering. Sure, if you want to hover a five inch versus a seven inch, obviously the seven inch is going to be able to hover with the same amount of battery for a lot longer than the five inch, but we're not hovering, we're moving. And if you have the ability to move quickly, you're going to move quickly. So you don't actually get more flight time with a seven inch. I can get more, I can probably get more flight time on my five inch with an 1100 milliamp 6S battery than I can on this seven inch with 2100 milliamps of 6S battery, even though the overall disc loading ratio of the seven inch is actually much better than the five inch. But I get to cruise at a way higher pace, which is why I like the seven inch quad so much. Also, before I move on, I'm going to throw it in there that I think six inches is a bastard size. Six inch and set and 5.5 inches is really a bastard size because I don't see a point to it. You don't get any benefits at all, at all really. And you just have to deal with more crap because you have to tune it better. You have to do all that other jazz better. And um, yeah, I, I don't, I personally don't see a point in six inch. However, if you were to run a six inch, I would highly recommend the 2408 motor. I think that's a really great size for six inch. I think it's not really useful to run 2208. I have tried it on six inch now, and I like the concept of not having that big hump of power down low, but I've found that on six inch props, it has enough heft to actually buffer that width of the motor that gives you that really bump of power down low. Now, I've already talked about that bump of power. I'm now gonna talk about the motor size and the motor heights and my concept and my theory of what I think is happening when you go wider versus taller particularly on larger sizes. It also applies to smaller sizes, but particularly on larger sizes. So there's two primary camps that I've heard people talk about with respect to motor size and uh, width versus height and all that stuff. Some people tell me, these are all engineers that I talked to by the way, they tell me that the motor volume is what's important. The more volume you have, the more torque you can generate. I, on the other hand, believe that the motor width versus the motor height really does make a pretty significant difference. I think that the motor width is 
helpful in so the best way I can describe this is that a wider motor has a larger torque lever to swing the prop. So in my mind, it's as if it's you're holding the prop further down to the end, so it's easier for you to rotate the whole thing, and it should technically have more torque. However, the people that are volume-based will say that as you make the motor wider, the magnets actually get farther apart, and the stator poles also get farther apart. So it's less overall circumference around the, the spin of the motor that you have full control of the bell, and therefore you are producing less torque. Now, I don't know if that's actually, I can't really verify any of this stuff, but I don't think that's true because as I've tested these things so much, I definitely feel like the wider motors tend to zip through the KV or the RPM range much sooner in the throttle stick versus narrower motors. So as the motor gets wider, it takes fewer amps, lower throttle input to get it to zip up through the RPM range. And then you've kind of covered most of your RPM range. And then once you get higher in the throttle stick, you no longer have any more RPM range because you have no more KV to give you any more fidelity of throttle input feel. So that's my concept of why a 2306 on a five inch just feels like it has this big hump of power down low and then it kind of just runs out of steam sort of on the top end and that's why i generally don't like 2306 now taller motors 2208s the height of the motor helps give you just better throttle feel now this next part i'm going to talk about none of this stuff is true it's just my opinion or based on my theories and concepts but the next part i'm going to talk about is again a totally wacky idea of mine which is that the wider the motor is it gives the motor the ability to have better fine-tuned control of the prop, meaning you, it can change the RPM of the prop much quicker and easier in small increments. However, the taller motors gives it the ability to change the RPM of the quad in larger swings more fluidly and easier. That's the best explanation I have. It doesn't really make full, extent, extent, full sense to me in my mind either, but it's the way I think about things moving forward to see if I can you know, work out what size is gonna work best for what prop size and how I'm gonna build a quad and develop a quad in order for it to perform a specific way that I want it to perform and what size prop I'm gonna put it on. But also the, the prop uh, aggression makes a difference, the prop weight makes a difference, the, the, how difficult the prop is to spin matters. All this stuff matters a whole lot with respect to the control performance that I'm after. I'm really looking for the best control. I've been flying for a while now it's boring to me if it doesn't perform fantastic. If it doesn't feel like an extension of my arm, it's boring for me completely, so I won't even bother flying it. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that. I've talked for a while now. Um, I hope this was really fun to listen to because it's been really fun to experiment with the really tiny scale and then the really big scale. And I've been developing props and stuff on the small scale recently. And so I've been kind of trying to extrapolate it out to the larger scale to see what happens. And then the five inches in the middle where it's like the, the most dull or it has the widest sweet zone of everything. So it's just interesting that anything you kind of throw on a five inch just works great. But then as you move up and down, things start varying a whole lot very, very quickly. Now, a lot of that probably has to do with the code as well because it's it's mostly tuned for five inch quads because that's what most people are flying. But thankfully the code is also able to handle the small stuff and the larger stuff a lot better than it used to back in the day. So yeah, I'm gonna keep testing. So far, these are my findings. I hope they were helpful. This motor is freaking awesome. It's an amazing value for 20 bucks for all that performance and all that just all that magnet in there it's really does perform well i have not tried the hyperlite 2408.5 yet i plan to at some point but again this is just something i do for fun so i'll get around to it especially the seven inch class which i don't have any this is the only place i have to fly the seven inch and i've flown it more in the past couple of weeks than i have ever ever that i've had seven inch so yeah hope this was this was fun floss your teeth floss your teeth because it's real important take care bye